Hello, church family. I want to say thank you so much for joining us for our worship service right here at the Kenston First Pentecostal Holiness Church. And today we're going to come together and we're going to worship the Lord together. God's been so good. Today we're going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. As you can tell from the window behind me, this is not morning time. I'm actually pre-recording this on this Saturday night, preparing it to launch and air on Sunday morning right now. So uh, as I'm coming to you, it is not live, but I know that the Lord, that He's going to minister to each and every one of us today. We're going to come together. We're going to sing songs of praise to the Lord. I want to encourage you right where you are so let's worship the Lord together. Sing along with the songs. Just lift up the name of Jesus Christ right there in your home. You can have church right where you are. Yes, you can. And today I believe with all my heart, God's going to move in your home. And most importantly, He's going to move in your life. Whatever you need today, God is able to do it. Can I hear an amen? Amen. But I want to say thank you so much for joining us as we share each week, will you please uh, share this service on your social media site? I want to say thank you for helping us to share the service, to help us get word out. Thank you so much for that. And uh, again, we're going to worship the Lord together. I want to share a message in just a few moments entitled, The Anointing Makes the Difference. Let me say it again. The Anointing Makes the Difference. Last Sunday, I was talking about the fire, the Holy Ghost fire. My friend, what we need in our church, what we need in all our churches and across this uh, land and across this world, we need the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes, we do. And I want to talk to you for a few moments this morning about the anointing, that the anointing makes the difference. But before we dive into today's worship service, I do want to share a few announcements with you. As you all know, uh, today we're online, we are virtual. And I'm going to be keeping you up to date on about future services at the church. And the reason we are online is because we've had some staff members who've been directly exposed with someone who has COVID-19. And so um, out of abundance of caution, again, we are doing everything we can to make it as safe as possible. So I want to say thank you so much for your understanding. Again, I know that this is not the same as being on site. Believe me, I'm the first to admit, and I would rather be on site as well. But all this happened on Saturday, and so it was a quick decision, but we do believe it is the right decision. So I want to say thank you so much for your understanding as we walk through this together. And uh, also, too, you know, this upcoming Wednesday night, February 3rd, we have scheduled our annual business meeting. Well, due to uh, today being virtual, we're going to push that business meeting, meeting back to Wednesday night, February the 10th. So again, not this Wednesday night, but rather the following Wednesday night, February the 10th. And I'm going to be sharing the proposed 2021 budget and also the election of four new board members. And so um, Mr. Billy Moy, and Mr. Lynn Banks. They are rotating off the board and we're going to be electing two new board members uh, at this upcoming business meeting. And Lord willing, next Sunday we'll be having the, uh, we'll be having the uh, uh, ballots, uh, absentee ballots available next Sunday if you're not able to be a part of that Wednesday night business meeting on February the 10th. So I'll say it again. The business meeting that was originally scheduled for this Wednesday night, February 3rd, we're pushing it back to Wednesday night, February the 10th. That is our plans. If anything changes, we'll let you know. But I would like to share with you uh, the four names that will be on the ballot so you can be in prayer uh, leading up to our business meeting. And here are the four names, uh, the four individuals, uh, Jason Jarman, Gerald Suggs, Dennis Daniels and Marty Carpenter. These are the four names that will be on the upcoming ballot for the election of two new board members. So again, that is Jason Jarman, Gerald Suggs, Dennis Daniels, and Marty Carpenter. Again, uh, this uh, just wanted to share these with you and no certain order at all, but just wanted to share these with you that you could be in prayer 
seeking the Lord as we come together for our business meeting. So thank you so very much. And we'll be keeping you up to date on future services. Again, I will keep you up to date through Phone Tree and through Facebook. Well, let's jump right into today's service. We're going to have a wonderful time. I want to pray and I want to ask God's blessings over you and your family right where you are. Hey, let me just say this. There's a lot of people hurting right now. Do you know that? There's a lot of people who are hurting right now. But let's you and I believe together that the Holy Spirit is going to move over these airwaves and it's going to minister to people right there in their home. Can we do that? Let's believe together. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for all your many blessings. I thank you, Father, for giving us another day. And Lord, I don't understand all that's happening right now. But Father, I am trusting you. I am trusting your word. And I ask in the name of Jesus Christ for a divine touch, O oh God, upon this immediate service. Move over these airwaves today and touch the people that are watching as we believe together for a mighty move of your spirit, dear God. I pray today that you would encourage your people, that you would uplift your people to bring healing to those who need healing. Praying for deliverance, God, in the name of Christ. And Father, if there be one that is watching today's service who may not know Christ as personal Savior, I ask in the name of Christ for a divine touch, Lord, and draw them to the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing these prayers. Have your way in this service as we worship you today, Heavenly Father, and as we learn from your word. In the name of Christ, we ask and agree. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Again, thank you so much for being a part of this immediate service today. Please, once again, share this service on your social media site. Help us to get the word out and also like today's video. It helps get that word out. Thank you so very much. Well, let's now go right into our worship service. God is so good, isn't He? Yes, God is so good. Let's worship together today as we just lift up the name of Jesus. God is so good.
I want to thank you once again for joining us for our worship service right here at the Kenston First Pentecostal Holiness Church. As I shared at the beginning of today's time together, as you can tell, this is not a live service. As you can see behind me with the uh, window, it is dark outside. This is pre-recorded on Saturday night. We had a lot of things happening in a short amount of time. And so I'm recording this late on Saturday night and editing to get it out to be aired on Sunday morning. So yes, it's Sunday morning when you're watching this, but it's being recorded on Saturday night. So happy Sunday morning to you. But I do know that God is moving in this service for I believe that God is touching you right where you are. I want to transition right now to a time of prayer for all the needs within our church family. We have so many people that are in need of a touch from God. And I want to encourage you, our prayer list that we show on the screens on Sunday, and also the prayer request list or the prayer list that's in your bulletin each Sunday as well, please continue to remember all these families and individuals in your prayers. It is greatly appreciated. As I've said many times, prayer on the ground determines what God does in the heavens. And let's you and I agree together in faith for all the needs within our church family. I, do, I would like to share a few names with you um, on today's, in today's service. Let's remember Jack Mazingo in our prayers. Let's remember Lisa Manning in our prayers. Also, we ask that you please remember Ms. Gloria Melton uh, and all her family as well as they've been diagnosed with COVID, but leaving for a touch in their physical body. Also, Ms. Sheila Rouse, please continue to remember her in your prayers. She has been in the hospital with COVID and pneumonia. She's had a very difficult time. Please remember Ms. Sheila White Rouse in your prayers. I also ask that you please remember Ms. Bonnie Humphrey's mother. Uh, she's not, not been doing well at all. And uh, she asked for prayer for her mother. And let's remember Ms. Bonnie and all her family as well. Also received word, uh, prayer request for Ms. Carol Lee's brother. This is Ms. Carol Lee's younger brother. Mr. Speedy Ingram, and um, he is uh, in the hospital, and he has COVID, and he's not doing very well. And she asked for prayer for her brother, Mr. Speedy Ingram. So thank you so much for praying for him. And we have others within our church family uh, that have COVID as well. And uh, again, I'm not sharing all those names, but God knows who they are and what they're going through. Let's pray for all those within our church family who've been diagnosed with COVID or any other sickness and all those connected within our church family. Let's be in prayer for them. And also too, I ask that you please be in prayer for our nation. Yes, our country desperately needs prayer. So let's agree together. Let's pray for our leadership on the national level, the state level, the local level. Let's pray and let's believe. I do believe that Jesus is coming soon. And my friend, the end time harvest. Let's pray for lost souls as well. And uh, also too in this prayer, I would like to pray over today's offering. So I want to encapsulate prayer for the needs and also the prayer for the offering. As we have one more worship song before I share today, before I share God's word, the anointing makes the difference. I want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness and your generosity in your giving to the work at the Kinston First Pentecostal Holiness Church. Please know that you can always give online. You see the address, the website address below, kinstonfirstph.com. Very simply, just go to our website and right on the homepage, you can see where you can give. Thank you so much for your faithfulness, your consistency, your generosity. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. And uh, let's now go to God in prayer, praying over all these needs and praying over our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching this, uh, this service today, who are apart online, watching live, or maybe at a later time. And I ask in the name of Jesus for your touch upon each one. Lord, I've shared some names today, God, but I know there are many more names that need a touch from you, families, individuals, circumstances, God. I'm asking in the name of Christ for a healing touch in people's bodies. Touch their respiratory system, I pray, to all those who have COVID. May their symptoms be alleviated in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we are grateful. Father, we are thankful for what you're doing right now. For we know, God, that you are the healer through Christ our Lord. 
Touch them, I pray, God. All those who are going through treatments, Lord, I pray for them today. Be with everyone going through cancer treatments, Lord. And I pray also, God, for those who are, who are separated from their loved ones, those, God, who may be in nursing homes or maybe in the hospital and family members are not able to be with them, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus to touch them right there in that hospital and touch that family member as well, God, who's not able to be with them. And we thank you, God, today for hearing these prayers. Lord, I pray for our country. I pray for our nation. Lord, we need a revival, God. We need a divine touch from you. And Lord, I'm asking in the name of Christ for your hand upon this nation, upon our leaders, state, national, local, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for sending revival. We believe it in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for the lost, to those who do not know Christ as personal Savior. I pray for a hunger for souls. God, I pray... God, that you would just move amongst the hearts of people to evangelize and share their faith. Move amongst our people, I pray, God. Move amongst our people, Lord. They will share their faith, God, not to be intimidated, not to be frightened, but to share their faith. For we know, Father, that your son Jesus is soon coming. And Father, we thank you today for being with us in the remainder of this service. Thank you so much for all those who are giving, God, through their tithes and other outreach ministries, Lord. I pray today, God, that you'll be with them and meet every need in their life. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen and amen. Wow. Well, again, we've come together today. We're going to worship the Lord as stated. And I want to encourage you in this song. You know this song that's about to be sung. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I want to encourage you right now where you are in your home. Can we engage together right now? In the comment sections down below, you can share your prayer request. We're going to be praying for all those needs. I also want you to lift up praises unto the Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place, in your home, but also in your vessel. So let's worship the Lord together now as we sing this beautiful song, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. God bless you.
I want to thank you once again for joining me today as we come together in this worship service at the Kinston First Church. And I want to share a brief message with you. Will you give me the next few minutes? I would like to share a very simple word, I believe a profound word, about how the anointing makes the difference. It was last summer when we were, you know, kind of down with the COVID uh, on Wednesday nights. We were still doing the online services on Wednesday night in the summertime that I shared this message from my home on a Wednesday night, I think sometime in June or July. I can't recall the exact month, but I want to share this message once again. I have another message that I have prepared already for this, for this morning that I was going to share with, this, uh, with all those in the sanctuary, but I want to wait and share that live with everybody when we return back on site. But I do believe that this word is a now word. I do believe it with all my heart. Again, to the title of today's message is The Anointing Makes the Difference. Can you say that with me? The anointing makes the difference. Say it again. The anointing makes the difference. Let's say it again. The anointing makes the difference. And what I mean is the anointing, the power of God that moves in the lives of believers. If there's ever a time that we need the power of God, please hear me. The church, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We are living in some times right now that are very, very uncertain. I mean, I could go on and share all these different things with you, and I don't believe I have to convince you that we're dealing in some very dark times right now. And what we as the church need... We need a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? We need a fresh move of Almighty God in our church services. We need a fresh move of God in these vessels, in our hearts and lives. I shared last Sunday morning about revival and how in the year 2020, all we heard was the word lockdowns. But I'm believing in the year 2021, I'm believing to hear open heavens that the power of God is going to move Upon, upon His believers. I believe that. And I want to share today with you from the book of Luke chapter 5, a very familiar story of, of Peter and the other disciples who fished all night long and had caught absolutely nothing. But we find where Christ, the anointed one, shows up on the scene and something takes place. Miracles happen when you're in the presence of the anointing. Amen? Miracles take place. We find in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. This is from the New Living Translation. Translation. And no doubt ye know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So all those who were oppressed by the devil, they were healed by the power of God, of Jesus Christ. I believe today there are many people who are oppressed. And when I say oppressed, I didn't say the word possessed, but rather oppressed. I know the devil many times has tried to oppress me. It's like that dark cloud hanging over me, trying his best that you could feel the weight of what he's trying to put upon our shoulders, all this stuff that he's trying to put upon us. And maybe right now you feel that way because of what's happening within our nation. Maybe with sickness in your family. Maybe something dealing with your job. Maybe some strained relationship. Maybe all the uncertainty and questions that we all have. And there's this oppression that the devil's trying to put on us. Let me remind us all today. The devil's a liar. And he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And I'm grateful today that the anointing of God makes the difference to break off all that junk. Amen? And I'm thankful today for the power of God. So in Luke chapter 5, we see a story where Peter had fished all night long. 
And the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 5 that after they fished all night long and had caught nothing, that Jesus asked Peter, he said, thrust out a little from the land that I might teach the people out of the ship. So Jesus, he gets in this boat and he begins to teach the people out of the ship. And we find that, that, that as the fishermen were cleaning their nets, as the Bible tells us, that as Jesus is teaching, and keep in mind, all the disciples have are empty nets. Keep that in mind. Empty nets have fished all night long, had caught nothing. You know, a fisherman without fish is broke, right? So they're tired, they're fatigued. I'm sure they're hungry, they're frustrated. I mean, all these mixed emotions that they're feeling as they have worked all night long. And for what? For nothing. But Jesus gives a word here as Jesus is about to give an illustrated sermon. In Luke chapter 5, listen to what the Bible says. Now, when he had left speaking, Jesus said to Simon, launch out into the deep. Basically, let those nets out and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto Jesus, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. That's a miracle. Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, meaning the miracle, Peter fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all that were with him at the draught or the catching of the fish which they had taken. So we see that that night a mighty miracle took place because Christ the Anointed One and His anointing showed up. I want to give you some very quick principles as we close out today's service and how the anointing makes the difference. Can you say it again? The anointing makes the difference. Here we go. Number one is this, that the anointing you respect is the anointing that will increase and flow in your life. Let me say it again. The anointing that you respect is the anointing that will increase and flow in your life. Now, Brian, what do you mean? As stated, Simon Peter was a professional fisherman, right? And Jesus, who was a carpenter, was telling Peter, who's a fisherman, to let down your nets for a draught, which means a great catching of, catching of fish. And it was nighttime. Peter knew that the fish during the night resided more in the shallow waters. And during the daytime, the fish would reside in the deeper waters. So this was completely contrary to what he had been trained in his vocation. But Jesus said, let down the nets for a draught, a great catching of fish. So Simon Peter, what did he do? The Bible says he let down that net and they enclosed a great multitude of fish. What's the point again? The anointing you respect is the anointing that will increase and flow in your life. Simon Peter had to respect the anointing on Jesus, even though he didn't fully understand. It didn't make sense. But he respected the petition made by Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing. He respected it. He obeyed. And when he did, a great multitude of fish were enclosed in that net. In fact, there were so many fish, such a huge miracle, that the net began to break and they had to ask the other guys on the other boat to come and help them. So what, what does this mean for you and I today? It means that you and I must respect the anointing of Almighty God. Sometimes God doesn't make sense, does He? But it's, that's when you and I have to obey God. Obedience is what God is looking for. And I believe with all my heart that in this time that we're in right now, God is looking for people who will be obedient to His Word. And that's what He's searching for. I want to encourage us all to dive into the Scriptures and not only read the Word of God, 
but to obey the Word of God. Because when you respect God's Word, when you respect the anointing of God's Word, and you allow it to operate, and, 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 you, and you obey what God says to do, you will find that God's Word will continue to rise up in you, and you'll see miracle after miracle after miracle. Even though you may not always understand the requests given by God, you have to respect the anointing because the anointing, say it again, the anointing makes the difference. So the anointing that you respect is the anointing that will increase in flow in your life. So remember, he's always looking for obedience. Number two, the anointing is the power of God. So again, the anointing is the power of God to, 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 to conquer any obstacle that emerges in your life. Let me say it again. The anointing is the power of God to conquer any obstacle that emerges in your life. That night, they had an obstacle. They had nets with no fish. They had a need. They needed provision. They needed income. They needed food. They were facing an obstacle. But what happened? The anointing conquers any obstacle that emerges in your life. Can I tell you, the devil does not like, he hates you and I. And he's doing everything he can to stop our forward progress. He wants to stop us, you know that? But let me remind us all today that we have the power of God living within us. And the power of God gives us the, 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 the enabling power to keep on keeping on. That's what the anointing is. The anointing is the enabling power to do what God has called you to do. And so I want to encourage us all today. Yes, obstacles will emerge in our life. We will face frustrations and setbacks just like the disciples did. But we've got to keep on keeping on, right? The anointing, what it does, it conquers any obstacle that emerges in your life. The anointing blinds you to the magnitude of the problem and enables you to push on through. Obstacles we will all face, trying to stop our forward progress spiritually. But we have the Lord Jesus Christ within our heart. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is what the church needs right now in America. Can I tell you the counterculture right now is fighting the church, doing everything it can to come against, against religious liberty and religious freedom. And what the church needs, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. There's, a, there's something that's trying to stop our forward progress. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to keep on keeping on. Amen? We're going to keep on keeping on. The anointing makes the difference. Amen? The anointing makes the difference. Say it again. The anointing makes the difference. So the anointing conquers any obstacle that stands in our way. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Who's the church? It's you and I. Not that building on 711 Phillips Road. That's not the church. That's a building, yes, but the church is you and me. The church is us coming together in unity, believing just like the believers in Acts chapter 2, believing that the power of the Holy Spirit will fall. Yes, that government that day was trying to stop the disciples and they tried to put out the fire, but I'm so thankful today that the power of the Holy Spirit conquers any obstacle that emerges in our life. Praise God. I'm going to preach to myself today. So yes, the anointing conquers any obstacle that stands in our way. Praise God. Let me give you a third point as our time continues forward. Number three, you always possess something that God desires to anoint. Yes, there's something that in your hand, in your life, that God desires to use to anoint. Think about David. David had a sling, right? Slingshot. Shamgar had an ox goad. Moses had a rod. Think about Peter. Peter that night, he had those nets. There was nothing special about those nets. There was nothing special about David's slingshot. Nothing special about Shamgar's otsko. There was nothing special about uh, Moses' rod. But what happened? They had something in their hand that God anointed. And right now there's something in your life that God has gifted you to do that He desires to anoint. It's amazing what God has gifted people with. And what God has gifted you with, He has anointed you to use it that it might bring glory to Him. Not glory to ourselves, but rather glory to Almighty God. 
He shares His glory with no one. It's to give glory to Him. I think about all the gifts. Look, I'm not able to sing. I wish I could, but there's some people, great day, they can sing. Wow. Instrumentation, likewise. Drama, art, preaching. I mean, I could go on and on. People who are gifted in their vocation. I mean, many people are gifted. How about cooking, right? <laughs> How about some cooking? People, God has anointed people to do what He's called them to do. Can I tell you, I, I say cooking, I know I, I laugh, but I'm telling you, that's a ministry. The ladies of our church, the funeral teams who help feed bereaved families who are hurting, that is a ministry right there. They are reaching people. And I want to encourage you today to find that gift that God has given you and use it for the glory of God. You have something that God desires to anoint. You know, I'm telling you, when I hear a song and you feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it just ministers to you. You see, talent might move the head, but the anointing moves the heart. Let me say it again. Talent might move the head and the emotions, but the anointing moves the heart. And there is a difference. You know that? The anointing. Wow. Today, pray and ask God to anoint you. Every day, I say, God, help me to live for you. If you only knew behind the scenes my prayer when I go before I speak on Sunday mornings, I say, Holy Spirit, I need the anointing. I need your anointing, Holy Spirit. I need your anointing. I stand behind the cross of Calvary and I ask God. I ask Him for the anointing because I realize I know my limitations. I recognize my frailties. I recognize I need more of God and less of Brian. I shared that last Sunday morning, John 3.30. He must increase, but we must decrease, right? Oh God, I pray that you use us. That's my prayer for the Kinston First Church. God, use us. Use us in these last day harvests. God, use us in these end times. Use us. Use you. Use me. Use us all. That's what God desires to do. You possess something that God desires to anoint. As stated, there was nothing special about those nets. But what happened? We find that Peter threw the net over and it enclosed a great multitude of fish. Wow. That's a miracle, my friend. The Bible says when he saw the miracle, he was astonished at all the catching of the fish. I'm telling you, the Lord will astonish you. You'll say, wow, where did that come from? Uh, what happened there? Can I tell you? It's the anointing. Let's say it again. The anointing makes the difference. Say it again. The anointing makes the difference. I want you to get this in you. The anointing makes the difference. Kinston First Church, the anointing makes the difference. That's what we need. We need the anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Which leads to my fourth point. The anointing brings forth divine revelation. Yes, it does. The anointing brings forth divine revelation. In that same story that I just read in Luke chapter 5, the Bible tells us that when he saw the miracle, he was astonished. And Simon Peter fell down on his knees and he said, Father, forgive me. What happened here? I believe with all my heart when Simon threw those nets over the side of that boat, even though he obeyed, yes, he did. In his heart, he was saying, surely we shall catch Nothing. He said, forgive me, O Lord, for I'm a sinful man. What does it mean here? I believe when I read this verse of Scripture again, looking in Luke chapter 5, he said again, he said in verse 8, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. It revealed the hidden unbelief in Simon Peter's heart. It's what the anointing did. We call it conviction this day and time, don't we? It's conviction. It's the Holy Spirit convicting us. You've heard me before in times past share about the word conviction. And the word convict is the word convince. Do you see that? The Holy Spirit convinces us that, it's, that, that apart from God, apart from Christ, we can do nothing. You see, we need the helper of the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said. Jesus tells us that you need the helper. You need the helper. And I'm telling you, church, we need the helper of the Holy Spirit in these last days. I mean, I cannot drive this point home enough. We need the helper of the Holy Spirit. I can't change anybody's life, neither can you. 
We need the Holy Spirit to bring divine revelation to the sinful heart. Just like the Holy Spirit opened my heart and opened my spiritual eyes that I needed a Savior, He can do that for you if you're watching today. You don't know Christ as personal Savior. Maybe for your loved one, don't give up on your prayers. I know that God, through the Holy Spirit, can convict them and open their hearts and they can say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. He will. Yes, the anointing brings forth divine revelation. I'm going to close with this. In John chapter 21, you find where Jesus and His disciples once again are fishing. Jesus is on the shoreline, and we find that Peter says, I'm going fishing. This is after uh, Jesus is crucified, and we find that the resurrection has taken place. And Simon Peter and the, and the disciples are out fishing. And all of a sudden, they've worked all night long. And like Luke chapter 5, they caught nothing. All right? And what happens? All of a sudden, on the shoreline, they hear a voice. And Peter recognizes, as the voice says, to cast your nets out once again. And Peter recognized that voice. What happened? The anointing brings forth divine revelation. The revealing, right? I recognize that voice. That's Jesus. And he gets out of the boat, jumps out of the boat, and goes to the shoreline. And the Bible says when he arrives on the shoreline, Jesus has got cornbread and fish. Wow. <laughs> What's the point? He knew back in Luke chapter 5 what Jesus had done before. He knew who his source was. He went to the source, Jesus Christ. My friend, the anointing brings forth divine revelation. You're watching this today and you're part of this service. If you don't know Christ as Savior, say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Be the Lord of my life and I receive your finished work on the cross. Forgive me, Lord. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. And my friend, Jesus will forgive you of your sins. Yes, He will. And if you prayed a prayer of salvation, I want to encourage you right where you are, please let me know. Go to the church website, kinstonfirstph.com, and please let us know that you prayed a prayer of salvation. Wow, I'm telling you, the anointing makes the difference. I'm, boy, I'm, I'm fired up today. <laughs> the anointing makes the difference. Maybe right now you're struggling. Don't you give up. Don't you throw the tile in. Remember, the anointing blinds you to the magnitude of the problem and gives you the power and the strength to keep on pushing forward. You are going to make it. I want to say it again. You are going to make it. Let me say it again. You are going to make it. Yes, you are. You're going to make it. Don't you give up. Quitting is not an option, okay? You continue to trust the Lord. The anointing makes the difference. Heavenly Father, touch them all today that are watching. Thank you for your power and your anointing in the name of Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you again so much for being a part of today's service. I appreciate you uh, allowing this, again, this allow me to come from my home into your home today. I appreciate it so much. And uh, we want to have a final song, uh, No Longer a Slave. Amen. Slave to fear and all this stuff the devil tries to put on us. No longer a slave. We're freed by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we close out today's service, again, I want to ask you to share this service on your social media site. I want to encourage you and thank you once again for your giving. I want to thank you so much for sharing your faith with your loved ones and friends and people you come in contact with. And let us pray together and believe together for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The anointing makes the difference. Let's worship together now in this last song no longer a slave. And I want you to lift your hands. I want you to raise your voice and give honor to the Lord for what He has done for you. You are set free by the power of Jesus' blood. God bless you. Thank you again for being a part of this service. I love you and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Let's worship the Lord together with His beautiful song. Unravel me with the melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fears are gone
gone I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh, I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Chosen me, love 